Hello everyone and welcome if you are new and welcome back if you are not. This is Treasures and Trinkets by Lindsay Creates Gifts and I wanted to try and take you through some creative beading because there isn't a lot out there on creative beading because it is a very hard tutorial process to take anybody through because it's creative it's just that it's usually offhand um, but I thought I'd give if I shared my process when it comes to creative beading that might help somebody else my process might be different from what you've seen so far and it might help you so I thought we'd got straight into it my inspiration for this creative beading is going to be from the April Bargain Bead Box which was the Vintage Violets and what I do is I pick a focal piece which in this case was my bead, my donut bead I picked my focal piece and decided that my whole idea was going to be around beading this somehow together and I then went out and went through the bag and went through my stash to see what would go together and I might not use all of these things but I just like to give myself loads of options I literally get loads of different things out that match my color theme so I have it there if I want it um, I'm, I probably won't use even half of this stuff but if inspiration sparks me it's there so the very first thing I want to do when it comes to sorting it out is to glue it all down like I'm not gluing this because I'm going to show you what we're going to do and the very first thing I'm going to do is glue this to some um, black stiff felt I was going to use white but I decided black suited my needs better And I want a little bit of design in here. I don't want it to be too wide, but maybe long. So I'm going to cut it along here to give it that rectangle to work with. I'm going to choose the side which I like most of my bead, which I think I like this side most. It has the most inclusions and spots and different things you can see so that's the side I want and I'm going to place it and glue it sorry I didn't bring my glue in silly of me I forgot all about it so I'm just going to put it I'm just going to put it on the highest point here and spread it I'm using E6000 Plus. Some people can't use this, but you can use some double sided tape. I wouldn't recommend regular super glue because it's too thin, but maybe Gorilla Glue, no more nails, maybe. I haven't tried that. Maybe I'll do something like that, trying glue alternatives for you. But yes, I'm using E6000. And I'm going to put that in the middle, right there. And also, because I want to put one of these over the top here and use beads, I don't want this to just be full of empty threads because the likelihood is they'll, they'll snap more easily. So I also have this softer, bendy quite translucent um, or quite thin felt that I'm going to use to create some little circles and just stack them up in there or even little squares as long as it's stacked up because we're going to cover it anyway but it's just going to be something for the thread to sit in when we're beading through so it's not just 
And what you could do actually is you wouldn't even have to cut it up. What, what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll it. Oop, I'm going to try anyway. I'm going to roll it like that because we don't want to really put too much glue in there either because that's going to affect how we, we can get our needle through. I'm going to do that and see how that works. I'm pushing it in. And that actually works fantastic when we put that on top. That will give us something inside and it won't we won't see it so now what i need to do is go away and wait for the glue to dry for this piece so funny story i was waiting for my glue to dry and i was just looking at the bits and things were just fitting together in my mind and uh, the things that were fitting together need to be glued so i thought i'd show you what came into my head and show you why they need to be glued just before just before we bead it in anyway but gluing in will help keep it sturdy and I really like how that looks so I'm going to go ahead and glue this these two down as well And this one I'm actually going to cut the hoops off of because I don't want them at all. I mean, this is the one where I had the, bro the broken hoops anyway. But there we are, cut them off just like that. Pick your favourite side. I have a blemish on this side, so this will be the side I'm going down. I'm going to also tack it into place as well with thread later, but for now, a bit of glue just to help keep everything in place. Just like that. There we go. I was just really liking how this was coming along. I didn't want anything to change. I'm not going to glue this because I'm going to stick a needle through it through each one of the holes just to make sure I can get my needle through there with the bead and such and get back through again but this is what we have so far and hopefully in the morning we will be ready to continue I'm really excited this is looking lovely Okay, so it's the next morning, everything is glued down and in place. I've pre-threaded my size 12 needle with my fire line. Uh, I'm using the six pound smoke fire line. And with this component, because the holes were so small, I took my size 10 needle, my bigger needle, and went through each of the holes once. So I knew that my 12 was going to go through with the thread on it. So we can go ahead and attach that next. And this will keep our donut in place. So the first thing I'm going to do is going to come around the back and tie the thread to the back. Now I'm tied off at the back. Let's start to attach our link piece. I'm going to use these metallic Irish brown toe hose, size 15 O. Now I want to centre this as best I can and just pick a starting hole. To try and come up through. There we go. I've got one already. 
that was nice and quick. And you just want to get that nice pull through. These are very small holes, so you most definitely will need a size 12 needle to get through it. There we go, you see how nice that looks? And then find your next hole. This may take some fiddling. You may find it quite quickly. There we go. I'm back through. I'm picking up a 15 -0, by the way. I'm not sure if that was obvious. And these are going to hold our link in place. Let's do this through each of the center holes. and just keep going all the way around through all those holes. So now I have my center piece there nice and tacked in with the 15 OC beads. I'm going to come down to this bit and start tacking this bit in so it's nice and steady. We don't have to worry about it coming away. And to do that, I'm going to come up between each little bauble. I'll show you like this, as close as you can, right around here because it's quite dark in there and your thread's not going to show so I've come up that side and I'm going to go over it do you see? right in here so go right in there And you see how it's, your thread disappears, you can't even see it. And it's just going to help keep it all tacked down. You're going to do that on every little bauble bit there. Just to keep it in place. Do another one with you. Go up that side. Go in this side. Tack it down. and do each, to each one of these bauble heads. Now that we've got that bit tacked down, it's time to figure out how we're going to tack this bit down. And the first thing I'm going to do is just for a little bit more security, because we're coming out down here. So I'm going to come up to this bit and just go up and down a couple of times, just to establish a new base area. And now I'm going to think how I'm going to get this to stay. And my thoughts behind that are I have a couple of different sizes of amethyst I could pop in there because it's big enough that it's going to keep that in place. So I'm going to look for those. So here are the different amethyst bits I have. I also got these out because I want these to go in these little circles here, like that. They fit quite nicely. And what I'm going to do is just have a go at lining up some bits and see how it works. 
so like that because I can't get these back on I'm going to see how it might look and they're a little bit small they're going to disappear so I think we'll have two more of these either side yeah that works nicely another one go either side like that right then let's get confirming this piece so I'm going to first come up the bottom here and because it's quite narrow down here actually I am going to add a tiny amethyst once I get up the bottom here I want to come right down in the corner there we go I'm going to get just the one tiny amethyst off here. This is, I'm pretty sure this is one millimetre amethyst. It's so, so tiny. And then one of these, one Dells, one of these amethyst. And one of those again, like that. pull it down because you aren't going to want it to disappear you want it to sit on the top like that so now pull it down and let it sit on the top like that you can see that doesn't quite fit which is fine all we need to do there is this is why it's creative beading I'm going to take my wire off just put it back through I'm going to take these off apart from the tiny amethyst my needle back on and load them up again but this time I'm going to miss out the sparkly run down in the middle and just put it on the end like that as you can see that fits much better and just pop in right at the top there See, and that's much better that sits much nicer and just to reinforce you can go through that again and there we go and then we want to come into here and add the bits that I said before the two rondelles one in here There we go, and that's what we have so far. And now we get creative again. 
Um, I think I'm going to continue with this rondelle pattern around here because I wanted something to come around here but I wasn't sure what or maybe be bringing these amethysts around here maybe they go down here but this is why creative beading takes so long and there's not much tutorials on it because it can be difficult to figure out what you want and where you want it we can have a few of these around see how that might look And then I could use a nice purple here for the stopper. I like that idea. So I think I'm going to go ahead and do that. So to do that you want to, when you're adding a bead like this and you want to sit it on the top like that, you want to imagine where you're needle is going to come up and you can sit on top to help you if you like but most of the time I do tend to do it by eye and then stick the bead on after I'm just giving you different options and then oh I didn't even get my beads out get the beads out <coughs> excuse me stop a bead and then come back through making sure it's in the right place and straight down like that I really like that, that's lovely and then you just keep going round again you can pop this on first if that helps you pop it on come around to the back oh. stick it on grab your stopper these by the way are higher metallic grape toe hose in 11 size 11 now just in case you want to go out and get these exact materials I'm not going to use anything too exotic so if anyone does want to make this they should be able to substitute the colours ever so slightly or something like that because it's a bargain bead box I think like for this you could easily substitute this tiny amethyst for an 11 bead and just keep adding these pieces like that So that's all of my bronze beads attached. Once I had attached each one, I went through and reinforced each one because they are heavy and they were moving about a bit. So I went through and I reinforced them and this is looking gorgeous. I don't want to do too much to this so it's overkill, but I do want to come in down here and add something and probably line it so we can get a good edging on it when I do the edging later. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm coming off of this side so I'm going to decide what I'm going to do in the edge in each hole here So we have these which we could put in each one but I think it would be overkill if it was in each one so I'm thinking about one every other perhaps 
that makes more sense. And then what do we have in between? I have some of these still to go in there. I have some of these and we want it to sparkle a little bit, but I really love the theme we've got going on here. We could go through this these pearls. These are the AliExpress pearls I got. They were mostly ugly. I was disappointed with the strand, but we could go through and pick the best ones perhaps because there are a few good ones on there and that would look quite nice some pearl strung along the bottom there I think I'm going to do that so I'm going to need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, fifteen. I'm going to need fifteen of these good pearls. I'm going to go away and find those and come back. I have together fifteen pearls. I'm going to anchor this up here because I'm going to put attach the dead pearls a different way to what I thought I was going to. So I'm just going to attach it like that. I'm going to come up right in the corner over here if I can find it there right there I'm going to add on all 15 of the little pearls I've just fished out And then I'm going to lay them along like this, just making sure that each one sits over its hole. One, two, three, four, five, six, eight. just want to put it loosely okay because now we're going to come back through and loop them I'll show you what I mean I'm going to come up by the loop right on the inside right here and then on the inside oh shoot don't put it too tight make sure you have your spaces inside just here there's a little tiny hole you should be able to get your needle through put it all the way through and that's oh shoot don't let it go over the other side of your prowl like I just almost did and just pull, obviously quite gently at first, we can go around and reinforce this in a minute we are just getting everything into place and the next one remember, not too tight, nice and loose at the moment and then we will go around and reinforce go 
put it through. If you cannot get through, because obviously they're all made differently, it won't hurt to just go where you can get it at the top here, because your thread will disappear anyway. Like so. Oh. You pull it, and the thread will disappear. And the next one, I'll do one more with you. Work nice and loose. Go to the other side. We'll go through there, go through there. Working nice and slow and fairly loose and come back with me when you've attached each one. There we are, I have attached all of my pearls exactly how I showed you. Like so, and that is looking incredibly beautiful. I'm incredibly proud of this, I'm not going to lie. Now what I want to do is figure out what else I want to do. This creative beading is honestly so much fun, it's my favourite thing because there's no plan, you can't mess it up if there's no plan. <laughs> so what else do I want to do? I need something in the middle here, quite obviously. This is a, quite a central bit. So what do I want there? Hmm. Well, we want to keep it all in line. Maybe another amethyst down here. Just need to figure out a way to attach it. That's maybe a bit big. What about a round one? A round one would look perfect, actually. Well, that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to use 50 nodes to attach it, because otherwise I'm not going to be able to hide the thread. I'll show you what I'll do first of all, because I would attach it without the 50 nodes, and then I'll go in with 50 nodes, and I'll show you what I'm going to do. So first of all, and this will be the last thing I add with this thread. So I want to come up on the inside here. Add the amethyst and go in directly opposite. Straighten it out a little and that can help to flatten it on there, but can't quite get there with one hand. Like that. And then for the 50 nose, and to help secure it, I'm going to come up here in the little swirly design. Right about there. So the 50 nodes have enough space to fall. And I'm going to add three, three 50 nodes. Two, three, I'm going to go through the amethyst. in the other side of this filigree design there. Again with enough space for the beads to fall nicely. Like that. And that looks rather lovely and it's reinforced. And it's this honestly with this fire line it's not going anywhere. It's my favourite to use. And I'm really enjoying how this is turning out. I'm really happy. This is, is where I'm going to tie off this piece of thread because it's really too short and to do that I'm going to come along here to some close threads I'm going to wrap it once
and then I'm going to knot it. So I'm going to come around this wrap I just made. And then pass through this loop twice. One, two, and pull. Nice and tight. Cut it with me lovely scissors. I'm going to cut this bit down as well. And this is what we have so far. Well, I've reloaded my needle with some more fire line, and I thought what we could do next is as we have this ball chain look on the inside, I have this ball chain chain. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to attach some just along here because I really like the way that looks. And then to tie it all in together, I'm also going to add some just at the top here. we would do that together. You just want to bring in your chain. I'm going to come up here where I want to attach it. Hold it all together and allow that thread to fall between the link of the balls like that and again your thread will just disappear and to just go along and to attach it every few Just continue to do that all the way around. So I have gone ahead and attached the ball chain to the bottom. I've decided I don't really want that at the top. I didn't I don't really like how that looked. So instead I'm going to see what else I can do, see what other things we can bring into this. I think I'm going to stick with a border of 50 nose and to do that I'm going to start at the top so I'm just going to reinforce at the top here come up because we're going to be going around so many curves I'm going to be beading a different way to my normal way other beaders do this but I'm going to go in uh, I'm going to put six on six fifteen nose and I'm going to lay them out like this I'm going to come in where they end. I'm going to come up in the middle of those and just tack them down. Like that. 
and then come up one before because I find it flows better if you're always coming out with another bead rather than coming up through the foundation Let's just go through that bead I'm going to add another six because it looks like I can one Seven, six, all the way down to the corner. That looks like I can fit that in nicely. And just keep doing that all the way around your edge and meet me when you've come back to the top. I just wanted to quickly record this bit for you because even though you know I haven't seen it being done by anybody else, it doesn't mean it hasn't, but I just wanted to share it with you. So I've just come around and done this little bit here. I've tacked it down and to make my points nice and neat like this what I'm doing is I'm coming up past this bead that I've just put on right right in there and then I'm coming up through just that one bead like so so I'm coming out with that bead and now I'm adding the required amount of seed beads in this case it's 615 O's And then I'm just simply coming along to this corner here. And as you can see, once I move that along a little bit, that creates a really nice bend in the seed beads. So I just thought I'd share that little tidbit with you, just in case you hadn't seen it, because I'm pretty sure I haven't seen that anywhere. So meet me back at the end. So I've gone around, I've surrounded my entire design, and now I need to decide whether I'm happy with that or whether I want to carry on. And the only thing I'm not happy with is up here, you can see where I've cut the um, loop off. And I'm not very happy with that, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to build up some beads around here to hide it. And it will also help me when I come to make a bail. So I'm simply going to come up right on there and I can see I need five seed beads to curl around here. Two, three, four, five. Pull that down. And I'm just going to pull it along and pop it in there. Like that. And that hides it nicely. And what it will also do if I come up and reinforce it. It would also give me somewhere else to sew into when I make a bale for it later. Go through these three. And 
and then go down again and that just keeps everything where we want it and it hides that top where we cut the loop and that looks absolutely beautiful so what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish it off with leather I buy these really nice leather offcuts off of eBay and repurpose them for my jewellery needs um, I have greys and blacks as well but I thought with this antique look it would be best to go with one of the reds or the browns I think this one would look really nice as a backing actually so I think this is what we're going to go for let's put my other pieces away and so anything that I have that I can I will I'm pretty sure I can provide links to everything to be perfectly honest and I will and so I'm going to tie this off and cut around I'm going to come back and then I'm going to come back I'm not going to cut around this with you because I feel if you're looking into creative bead embroidery rather than normal then you're looking to up your bead embroidery game and already know how to do this so I'll be right back when I've cut around it and when I've cut around my leather as well so I've got my two pieces I've cut around it and now what you want to do is glue and edge all you need to be careful with is the leather um, if you're going to get leather off cuts because it's many different size thicknesses and um, strength to get through so just be careful there I'm extremely pleased with the project we've come up with today and I hope you enjoyed this video too and enjoy, and join me for more especially this new series which I'm going to have so much fun with the creative beading with the bargain bead box if you liked this video please join me for the next one where we will be finishing off the edge and putting a nice decorative bail on there nice and simple and will be shorter than this video because it's something that everybody pretty much knows how to do if you didn't like how this turned out I love how this turned out I'm not going to change a thing but if you didn't like this bit and you didn't like that you if, if you really look you can see the thread you can come in with say some 50 nose on a bit of thread before you do the back obviously and you can do little caterpillar type loops around each bit I decided that I didn't want that because it was adding too much bronze but I liked the way I really loved the way this has turned out thank you for joining me and I hope you will join me for more creative bead embroidery bye